What's up everybody, it's your girl Nia the Video Gamer and I wanted to go over the Nintendo Direct that happened yesterday on November the 12th. So I'm just going to go down the list so if you see me looking to the side it's because I've got some notes um, here that I wanted to talk about um, the key points. But so first and foremost Reggie comes on and he says how you know this is the first direct since the passing of um, former CEO and president of Nintendo Satoru Iwata and he reassured us basically that the Nintendo directs will continue on even after his passing so that's really good news um, I'm really happy about that because I actually do enjoy the Nintendo directs sometimes they're poopy sometimes they're really good and sometimes they are just rage worthy but I I long for for the updates you know what I'm saying I'm, I'm glad that Nintendo um, wants to continue to do them so there was a rumor some time ago that Twilight Princess HD was happening some hackers data mined the eShop and lo and behold Twilight Princess HD is real and it's coming out in March on March the 4th and if you pre-order it comes with a Wolf Link Amiibo, which is going to be called the Midna Amiibo because I've already seen people saying, oh, I'm just going to call it the, Mid the Midna Amiibo. So it's coming with that as well as the original soundtrack for the game. Um, to be honest, from what I've seen, it doesn't look significantly better than the Wii version. I mean, obviously it's up -res, um, but you know, they didn't really give it the Wind Waker treatment, which is really disappointing. You know, they did really touch on the lighting. They didn't really try to um, smooth out some of the sharp edges because you know, the Wii version is really polygonal because of the hardware that it was working with. So it's basically just like any other typical remaster out there, just a general up -res, and it's going to have traditional controls. Um, which I'm okay with because the Waggle controls in Twilight Princess weren't uh, preferable, you know what I mean? It was kind of annoying, you know, but obviously in Skyward Sword it was much more improved, the one-to-one -one IR pointing, and I was kind of hoping that there would be an option for one-to-one -one, um, when I heard this rumor, but it looks like it's just going to be only con con traditional controls, which I'm okay with. I'm okay with that. It's whatever. And also, apparently the data that's saved to the Wolf Link Amiibo for Twilight Princess HD is going to be used in Zelda Wii U. I'm really not excited about the fact that there's going to be Amiibo support in Zelda Wii U. I think that Zelda Wii U and any core Nintendo franchise should be left alone as far as Amiibos are concerned. But what do you do? Just hopefully it's not on no shenanigans, but I'm not going to get into any of that, whatever. And for more Zelda, there's going to be a Fierce Deity outfit coming to Triforce Heroes on December the 2nd, which is really cool. And I had a chance to play the Triforce Heroes demo on the Nintendo eShop some time ago. And the game is actually pretty um, fun. You know, it's definitely not an optimal Zelda experience. It's not supposed to be. It's just like a fun little game that you can play with your friends within the Zelda universe. They talked a bit about Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeons coming out on November the 20th. They talked about some new Splatoon content. There's going to be two new maps, which is one is going to be Museum di Alfonsino, which is supposed to come out today, and Mahi Mahi Resort, which I thought was supposed to come out yesterday, but I don't recall seeing it because I was actually playing Splatoon yesterday. So maybe they'll both come out today. And there's also going to be an update of 40 new pieces of gear coming to Splatoon and they all look really cool and awesome so I'm looking forward to the new updates for Splatoon. I'm glad that even though Splatoon had a terrible launch in my opinion, I mean it had a good launch for Nintendo, I mean it sold like butt loads, but the bare bones content was a sore spot for me as a gamer, you know what I'm saying, that's what I care about as a consumer. But over time Splatoon is becoming a lot more of a formidable opponent in the Nintendo game space as far as accessible games are concerned so shout out to Splatoon whatever and so for Mario Maker they're gonna be creating a portal site that you can access on browser and smartphone that helps you to kind of mow through courses a little bit better there's a lot more filtering options and things like that and you can favorite them and bookmark them on the mobile and the browser site and then they show up in the game so that you can go back to those courses that you found and that update is coming in December they talked about Amiibo Festival that's coming out in November. Yawn, I don't care about Amiibo Festival, whatever. It's an Animal Crossing, like, Mario Party type game. I don't care about that stuff, okay? Mario Tennis actually looks really cool. Um, there's lots of, like, power-ups and things like that. I've actually never played a Mario Tennis game, but it looks dope. The only sore spot to me about Mario Tennis, which I feel like is a really big missed opportunity, is that 
you could play online in Mario Tennis, but you can't play with your friends. You can't make par- private rooms with for your friends. Really big missed opportunity. And even though Mario Tennis is not like a huge game, it's more like a B team, C team game for Nintendo. Um, that could have been something fun, a, a, a separate type of multiplayer game to play for the holidays, but lo and behold, missed opportunity. And one thing they also talked about in Mario Tennis is you can use your amiibo for Mario uh, Tennis as uh, partners, you know, in, in your game. And it's coming out on November the 20th. So they also showed a little bit of Xenoblade Chronicles X. They didn't show any new information about Xenoblade Chron- Chronicles X, they just kind of highlighted it. The game looks fire. They were talking about some packs that you can download. They're basically just like, you know, uploads of like the textures and things like that. They make the game run better whenever you decide to get it or get it um, at launch. And they're also encouraging you to preload the game. And you don't have to download any, any of the packs if you preload because when you preload, all of this stuff is going to download with the game automatically. Um, and Xenoblade Chronicles X is coming out in December 4th. I didn't really was, I mean... I was slightly excited about Xenoblade Chronicles X. I wasn't terribly excited about Xenoblade Chronicles X, but it looks good. And I do plan on picking it up. It's a good game, and I'm definitely looking forward to playing the co-op with some friends. And they talked about some eShop exclusive games like Badge Arcade, which actually looks really cool. It's a free-to-start game that allows you to lock Nintendo-themed badges so you can customize your Nintendo 3DS home screen. Notice how I said customize your Nintendo 3DS home screen because 3DS actually has themes and other interactive things to make the 3DS feel more personalized. You know, something that the Wii U doesn't have. Um, But that's neither here nor there. They also talked about how you could unlock some exclusive Nintendo themes through Badge Arcade. Um, There's going to be a Pokemon Picross game, which is free to start, and those are coming in early December on Nintendo 3DS. I don't really care about those little free to start games, but Badge Arcades look pretty cool just to kind of give you something to do on your Nintendo 3DS. Now, they also talked about some Nindy titles coming, like SteamWorld Heist, which is coming holiday 2015, and it also comes with the SteamWorld Heist theme for the Nintendo 3DS, which is really hype because... I really like the SteamWorld Heist um, art style. I really like the direction of that game in general. They also talked about how Fast Racing Neo is coming in early December and you can race with seven additional players online, which is pretty hype. It's the closest we're going to get to an F-Zero on Wii U at this point. So if you want F-Zero, show Nintendo you want <laughs> you want an F-Zero type game by purchasing freaking Fast Break and seeing Neo so they could see that they messed up. They could have made an actual F-Zero game. Hopefully they bring out one for the NX in the future. Hopefully. And they also talked about Typo Man, which looks really dope. And Typo Man comes out on November the 19th. Um, they talked about Yokai Watch, which, which is available now on the Nintendo 3DS. Devil's Third is apparently coming to the Wii U on December 11th. And there's going to be a new Wii U bundle coming for the holiday season that features Super Smash Bros. and Splatoon. And there's also going to be some deals on the original Nintendo 3DS XL that are coming with um, Super Mario 3D Land. They're just trying to get rid of all those old bundles. For early 2016 on the Wii U, Pokemon Tournament, I'm sorry, Pokemon Tournament is going to be coming in the spring of 2016. There's also going to be Amiibo cards that offer Shadow Mewtwo um in the game or if you fulfill certain conditions within the game so you don't have to buy the amiibo cards to get shout on youtube you could do some stuff in the game to unlock them which is really cool people can do it the old school way that's the way that it should be that's the way that all amiibo content in games should be in my opinion but that's neither here nor there they also showcased um an improved looking version of star fox zero which looks a lot better than the version that we saw at e3 there was some um, resolution improvements. There was some lighting improvements. It doesn't look like there were any improvements to how many enemies were on screen. It doesn't look like there were any improvements to the actual textures in the game, which is one of the things that the game really needs. You know what I'm saying? But it does look, you know, better. And hopefully it looks even better when it releases in April. It's coming out on April the 22nd. And, you know... Something that I mentioned in my Star Fox impressions when I went to PAX Prime, I wrote it on sheattack.com, was that 
one of the things that I really enjoyed about Star Fox Zero was the vehicles, you know. Um, of course, you know, you've got your R-Wing. The R-Wing turns into a walker. You've got your Landmaster. The Landmaster can fly now, which is pretty dope. And there's also one other vehicle as well that allows you to hack and things like that in the game. It doesn't say anything about Star Fox having online, which is another missed opportunity. I mean, like, don't get me wrong, Star Fox Zero looks great. But there's really no reason why Star Fox Zero doesn't feel like a true 8th um, generation Star Fox. I mean, the game itself looks great. I love the arcade old school feel of it, but I'm ready for Star Fox to step it up into the next level. I'm ready for Star Fox to step into the 21st century. You know what I mean? It really should be a lot larger scale than it is, but it's obviously, obviously still... You know, the Wii build of the game that they made so long ago that they, that they decided not to release on the Wii U. But it is what it is. Hopefully it's still a fun game for what it is, but it's definitely not the Star Fox it could be, in my opinion. They also talked about Super Mario Paper Jam, which actually looked a lot better to me than it did at E3 at this particular Direct. I'm not really a fan of the Mario and Luigi RPG series. I know that's blasphemy, but I'm really not. But I'm really a big fan of the actual Paper Mario, its own series. But it looks cool, and it's supposed to be coming out in January, January the 22nd, so that looks pretty cool. And it's also going to have Amiibo support, and the Amiibo support is going to come in the form of battle cards, at least in-game battle cards. You use your Amiibo to unlock certain battle cards within the game, and you can use those battle cards for like certain power-ups and things like that in the game to kind of help you achieve your obstacle or defeat enemies. Um, another game that actually was kind of unexpected for me was Final Fantasy Explorers. It's got a local and Wi-Fi co-op um, type of deal in the game. It reminded me a lot of Final Fantasy meets Monster Hunter and I think that's probably one of the reasons why it kind of piqued my interest. So I could potentially see myself actually playing Final Fantasy Explorers with friends. Um, and you can use trained monsters as allies if you can't get four friends together to play with you. And the game will also be getting free DLC content. And that game is coming out in January on the 26th. Fire Emblem Fates. Lordy, lordy, lordy. So, Fire Emblem was one of the series that Nintendo has that was largely ignored by Nintendo because they didn't feel like it would have enough appeal, especially over here in North America. But, um... Ever since Fire Emblem Awakening, Nintendo has really been cashing in on Fire Emblem. So, Fire Emblem Fates, y'all already know, was like a two-game deal because you're going to be playing with two different kingdoms in the game. I don't remember the names right now at the moment. But the two kingdoms are warring against each other. Fire Emblem Conquest and then Fire Emblem something else. I can't think of the time, but they're the same game, but they're from the perspective of each kingdom. So, they're going to be having a special edition where the whole thing... For the two games is $80, but it's also going to come with an additional DLC story mode um, called Fire Emblem Revelation. So, but if you don't get the special edition and you just get Fire Emblem Conquest, then you'll get the other Fire Emblem from the other perspective for half off of $20. Apparently there's going to be like some DLC down the road. I don't know if it's paid or if it's free or not. And Fire Emblem is coming out in February. It's coming out February the 19th for Nintendo 3DS. And to be honest, I don't know if I'm going to be getting this. Like, I just feel like that DLC is crazy. Like, the DLC... What? Why? Why? I don't understand it at all. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Why are they making two versions of Fire Emblem? Like, this isn't Pokemon. Like, what? Are, what? Like, my mind is blown. But... I think it's some bull crap, if I'm to be fair. To be honest, I think that the DLC for Fire Emblem is some bull crap. Let's just keeping it real. The way that they're handling Fire Emblem is kind of on some bull crap. I'm just saying. Keeping it real. So, um, let's see what else. Mega Man Legacy Collection is coming to the 3DS, and there's going to be a uh, gold Mega Man amiibo that comes alongside the game that's going to be coming out on February the 29th. And if you use the amiibo, either the gold Mega Man amiibo or the existing Mega Man amiibo for Super Smash Bros., it unlocks exclusive challenges within the game. So, something that a whole lot of people were looking forward to is Pokemon Red 
blue and yellow which is coming to the virtual console in february on the 27th and you can trade your pokemon locally wirelessly um with friends and a lot of people have been begging for the old school pokemon uh, games coming to the virtual console so it's good to see that nintendo kind of listened to them on that front because y'all know the pokemon fan base is loud <laughs> so that's good for them i personally don't care but it's good for them so Another game I feel like is also in some bull crap is Hyrule Warriors Legends, which is the Hyrule Warriors 3DS version. But there's gonna be a new character called Linkle, who's official, who's kind of sort of like a female Link. And I've heard that name before. I think I remember some place hearing that Linkle is supposed to be like his little sister or something like that. Um, I don't know. She's cute. Whatever. She's got the dual um, crossbows kind of thing going on, and instead of like the spin attack like Link, she's got a spin kick and Hyrule Warriors Legends is coming out on March the 25th. Now, unfortunately, all of these characters will not be on the Wii U version of Hyrule Warriors DLC. If I can recall correctly, I think that if you buy Hyrule Warriors Legends on the 3DS, then all of the content that wasn't on the Wii U version transfers over to the Wii U version if you have it. I think that's some bullcrap. Like, you shouldn't have to pay a whole total for, like, a game just to get the characters on the pre-existing version like that doesn't make any sense i don't understand why this game even exists like it's definitely a money grab if i've ever seen one but it is what it is i won't be buying it so whatever and it's kind of messed up because when the original hyrule warriors came out on the wii u a lot of people were really asking for skull kid who's going to be a playable character in hyrule warriors legends on 3ds so it's kind of like a smack in the face because all the wii u version got was a freaking costume for um lana for skull kid so that's some bull crap but whatever i won't be buying it <laughs> so um they confirmed that bravely second is coming in spring 2016 there was a whole lot of um good reviews and good reception that came from bravely default the original so um kudos to square for making another awesome looking title dragon quest 7 is coming in early summer 2016 for the nintendo 3ds Dragon Quest VIII is also coming in um, 2016 for the Nintendo 3DS. And they also talked about some more Nindy games coming to Wii U, like Hive Jump, um, Kerbal Space Program, Mighty No. 9, Lego Marvel Avengers, which isn't an indie game, Project X Zone, which is also not an indie game, Terraria, that was pretty much it for that indie reel. And then the very last thing that kind of pretty much set social media ablaze was the fact that Cloud Strife from Final Fantasy VII is going to be a new character in Super Smash Bros. So, um, and there's also going to be a Super Smash Bros. broadcast specifically about that game in particular coming in December. They didn't give an actual date, we just know it's coming in December. So, if I'm to assume correctly, they're going to be talking about the characters from the Smash Ballot, if you guys remember voting for characters for the Smash Ballot. But, as far as Cloud being a Super Smash Brothers, I personally don't care. I'm not really the biggest Super Smash Brothers fan. Like, I like Super Smash Brothers, but I'm definitely not hard body about Super Smash Brothers like a lot of people are. And I'm not a fan of Final Fantasy, so I don't really care. But I know a lot of people are really excited about it. So, I mean, I guess shout outs to all of those people, but I don't care. But he does look cool. His, um,. His, his movesets look really cool. His stage that he's going to be bringing with him is also very cool looking. So it's going to be really interesting to see some gameplay of that when I know some people that I know will be getting it. So, But overall, um, if I were to rate the Nintendo Direct, I would give it a C+. I don't think that it was a really good Direct. I don't really think that there was too many like you know surprises or things that kind of took me aback. But at the same time, I don't think that it was like trash either. I think that was a pretty good mix of like some okay things with some good things. Like there wasn't too much Amiibo talk. Like yeah, they talked about Amiibo, but they didn't go on and on and on about it. Um, one of the things I noticed for sure about this Direct in particular is that the pacing was right. The way that they communicated the information to us was in a way that um, Northern, you know, North Americans, you know, understand. You know, they made it very clear. Um, what to expect and you know some information about some of these things that we pretty much already knew but the way that they presented it was really good and really informative um and one thing that i've also noticed as well with this whole thing is that they are definitely all about the 3ds 
still that hasn't changed still and they're pushing Wii U owners like the hell out of the door like let's keep it real we already know that the Nintendo NX is prepping to come very soon probably as soon as 2016 and if it is a home console or at the very least a hybrid that can act as a home console and as a handheld they're they're getting ready for it <laughs> and um just as a personal stance just coming from from my stance you guys know i'm like one of the biggest nintendo fans ever but um i don't hate my wii u i enjoy the games that i do have for the wii u but as far as the system itself i don't really care anymore <laughs> i don't really care about nintendo updating the wii u anymore i don't really care about the wii u getting any more surprise announcements like i took the ill when i got it at launch and um paying 350 for it you know it's just it is what it is i i am just hoping that in 2016 nintendo kind of gives people something to look forward to because the wii u was a major disappointment um for myself and as many 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 others so hopefully in in 2016 when they bring out the nx assuming that the nx comes out next year that they they are on it and i'm hoping that the reason why the wii u was so lackluster is because they are preparing for the nx um but that's another thing they need to work on too is not not kicking their their current hardware to the side because they're working on something new they really got to work on exercising their resources and growing um their resources they really need to start reaching out to more developers to making games for them like why isn't it that you know they're not taking all of these indie developers and having these people make games for them i don't understand that because you know we know nintendo they can sustain themselves financially but they need to really use those resources to push and um just go bigger you know go harder go better because slowly but surely Nintendo is really only at this point kind of catering to their core fan base and me a person who was largely um, a Nintendo fan you know what I'm saying primarily the direct was just okay for me so I could just imagine people who are not Nintendo fans watching the direct and not really caring about anything that was shown because everything that was shown was pretty much catered towards um, Nintendo's core fan base so um, but as far as that, I don't think the Direct was bad. Don't get me wrong. Um, it was okay. So, I don't really have anything else to say about the Nintendo Direct. Um, I will be getting some of these games, even Twilight Princess HD, but I don't, I won't be getting it for full price thanks to Gamers Club a lot because I'm just a big Zelda nut and I need something to play until Zelda Wii U comes out. But, that's pretty much it. Let me know how you felt about the Direct and um we can talk about it you know what i'm saying let me know in in the comments and i'll talk to you guys at a later date peace